Star Wars 7x7 episode 2242. Today we are in the final leg of our look at the winners and losers of the Skywalker saga. Today the winners of The Rise of Skywalker. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So yes, we are in the final stretch here. We're looking at the winners of The Rise of Skywalker. And just to refresh you on the parameters of this, these are the characters whose fortunes most improved as a result of the events of The Rise of Skywalker. And we'll start in the number seven position with Babu Frick. So, granted, Babu's day wasn't entirely perfect. I mean, the Spice Runners of Kajimi are, for all intents and purposes, decimated, right? They are no more. The planet has been destroyed by the Final Order, right? Okay, or the Sith Empire or whatever, the Sith Eternal, however you want to phrase it. So, yeah, now he is a refugee in that situation. But, on the bright side, he actually helped the Resistance by unlocking C-3PO's Forbidden Memory Vault and getting that critical piece of Wayfinder information that allowed the Resistance to find Exegol and take the attack to Palpatine and the Sith Eternal. And he even participated in the final battle with Zori Bliss and was able to... Well, I don't know. I don't know what he was doing. Just hanging out in the footwell? Working the pedals? I don't know. But he was along for the ride and it probably felt good to be able to win and survive survive that battle. So there you go, Babu Frick at number seven. In the number six spot, I have Finn. And we talked about how with The Force Awakens, it was really hard to say whether he was a winner or a loser as a result of the events of that movie. He certainly actually had a better place because of his commitment on The Last Jedi, or because he discovered that commitment for The Last Jedi. Now, with The Rise of Skywalker, not only is he fully committed, but his actions are also more selfless, right? So when he was trying to fly his speeder into that cannon in The Last Jedi, it was really kind of selfish in a way because he wasn't thinking about everything else and about what was really happening or whether it was even possible for him to survive that. He was definitely more strategic in The Rise of Skywalker, part of the bigger picture, and you know, still willing to sacrifice himself in the process, and thankfully did not have to sacrifice himself after all, and managed to find somebody with whom he had a kinship with Janna when they were uh, you know, having their mission on Kef Beer. In fifth place, I have Lando Calrazine, who is brought out of retirement for one last ride, and boy oh boy, does he deliver. I have to say, you know, there was a part of me that, you know, in looking at the course of the movie itself, you know, stepping outside this conversation, I really felt like I wished it had been, you know, one of the new generation of the Resistance who had managed to convince everybody to come to the rescue, but really, if you're gonna have to bring, you know, the entire galaxy with you, it's gonna take a smooth talker like Lando, to be sure. And it already had been established that the Resistance was having a lot of trouble getting people to come to their aid. So, man, thank goodness they brought Lando into this thing. And he, not only did he deliver, but he managed to survive the whole thing, too. In fourth place, I have Poe Dameron. And Poe is brought to the edge of defeat and despair before Lando obviously arrives with the cavalry and everything is redeemed and it's great. Ultimately, though, the key thing is that Leia was hoping for him and, you know, others around him to step up and be the leaders of the next generation that she could entrust with carrying this battle to a successful conclusion. And he does step up in that regard. He needs, you know, a little outside help. But don't we all? I mean, it's just like Lando and the fleet relying on Han and the crew down on... Endor, right? He's saying, you know, Han will have that shield down. It'll just take a little more time. It's like Lando will be here with the fleet. We just got to hang on. And, you know, when things look like they're at their worst, oh man, he's, you know, it works out and he's able to keep everybody in the battle long enough for it to matter. In third place, I've got Kylo Ren, aka Ben Solo. And he could have been higher, I suppose, if he had actually survived the events of the Rise of Skywalker. But 
getting to be a force ghost when it didn't look like he was going to be a force ghost, well, that has to, you know, at least be a nice consolation prize, comparatively speaking. I mean, he wasn't exactly Sith anyway, and Sith, I think, can only, you know, occasionally come back as spirits on the Sith homeworld, probably with some, you know, crazy rituals and stuff like that. But where does a, you know, dark side force user go when he or she dies? Uh, you know, I don't know, but I don't think they get to come back in any meaningful way. So yeah, at least there's that. And Kylo Ren, or as Kylo Ren, He's doing pretty well throughout the movie, right? I mean, he is running the First Order with no problem. He's getting assistance from Palpatine. And, you know, Palpatine doesn't really pull the double cross until the very end. But by then, he's already decided that he's going the light side route. And so it's not like Palpatine messes him over as Kylo Ren. So, you know, he does as well as could be expected while he is that. And he gets redeemed, and he manages to help save the rest of the galaxy. In second place, and I went back and forth on this one with this in first place, but I went with Rey for second place. Now, Rey is ultimately able to, you know, learn the truth about her family, learn the full story about it, and is able to ultimately take control of her own legacy. Like, she has agency to decide with whom she wants to ally herself. You know, we could debate endlessly about, you know, how the movie ends and how that shakes up. You know, personally, like, I get why she says Rey Skywalker, but there's a part of me that wishes that she just stuck with just Rey, but they kind of kept setting it up that there was going to be a different answer over the course of the movie. So, you know, uh, yeah, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I'm willing to accept it as it is. And ultimately, it still demonstrates that even though she has a very dark-sided bloodline that she decides to stay in the light, and that's where she wants to you know, represent herself, ally herself with, and ultimately you get the idea that as she goes out into the galaxy on her own after the events of the Rise of Skywalker, whatever happens next, that she is going to be allying herself with a you know, legendary set of good people in the universe. And so we've just got first place to talk about, but really quickly, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Audible and just remind you that you can get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial when you go to sw7x7.com slash audible. And if you decide to stick with the service, then we get a little referral fee for that and that helps keep everything running here at Star Wars 7x7. So please do consider checking out sw7x7.com slash Audible. There are a couple of new audiobooks coming out very soon worth checking out as well. Not that you have to get a Star Wars one necessarily. You can get a whole bunch of other ones. Thousands of titles. But one more time, sw7x7.com slash Audible. And in first place, again, uh, you know, it's so hard because Ray really saves the galaxy. But I wanted to give first place to Janna in this one because when we meet her, she has escaped from the First Order, but she's basically marooned on Kef Beer with a bunch of her mates from the First Order. And as a result of the events of Rise of Skywalker, not only is she, you know, liberated from Kef Beer, like she's now able to go out and about in the galaxy, she helps defeat the First Order slash Final Order slash Sith Empire slash Sith Eternal, whatever, right? She defeats the bad guys, plays a critical role in that part. And, and, none other than Lando Calrazine is going to help her find and reconnect with her family. I mean, I suppose Finn is probably going to search for his family next and, you know, maybe he's going to get help also. But, I mean, to have that help offered by Lando, I mean, that is a really remarkable thing. So there you go. That's my list of the seven winners of The Rise of Skywalker, seven characters whose fortunes most improved as a result of the events of the movie. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show. If you have differing opinions on this subject, I would love to hear them. Drop me a line wherever you catch the podcast. And there's a comment section or at home base at sw7x7.com. Thank you so much for joining me as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.